Hey Copa fam, there's an incredible innovation in terrace culture on the horizon and we need to talk about it. When we think of impressive football atmospheres, we tend to associate it with one thing, pyro. The use of flares creates visually appealing choreographies that can make unique celebrations as well as intimidating atmospheres for the opponent. It's something that comes natural to terrace culture. I mean, just look at what I told Ellie when we were in Marseille last year. What I don't understand is like, how, how do you have this many flares? There's... This is the thing that's natural to Marseille, right? The first clubs in Europe come from places like Genova or come from places like Marseille, they're port cities. They've right. always had flares so the boats could get by at night. So using these flares is a representation of what the tradition is in Marseille. If you look over there, there's a woman still selling fishes for doing all this stuff. Like These people are completely connected to the ocean yeah. and lighting off 2,000 flares is the first way they're going to express that. But due to health and safety concerns, pyrotechnics are still considered illegal. And as much as fan groups all over the world like to add color to their match day experiences, governmental bodies don't seem any closer to lifting bans on flares. In fact, bans are only increasing, their use is not diminished, and no one has come up with an alternative until now. Thanks to the invention of the low temperature burning flare by Danish pyrotechnician Tommy Korsten. I heard about this problem uh, some years ago, and then I thought about it uh, and, and tried to, to see if there was something I could do. I came up with this. <laughs> Let's test it out. First of all, sparring it open, super simple, and it starts going. Look how high up I can hold it without burning my hand. A normal flare, this is completely impossible. Look at my hand going through this. It's not that hot. If I put it against my head, my hair doesn't light on fire. So obviously the flame, it's not burning at as high a temperature, so you're not getting the same effect. When you look at a normal flare that you might have in a stadium, the flame will be up to here, it'll occupy all the light around you. However, this is a bit more simple. But that being said, imagine you've got a whole series of these, you can actually write something out and it's visible. Rather clearly, uh, I saw this was something. Then I contacted the, the Danish fan organization because I needed to know, would, would everyone, anyone use it or is it just a waste of time? I told him who I was in the telephone and uh, what I have invented and then it was silent for a moment. And then Han said, he said some swearing words in Danish and said afterward, that was about time that someone came up with a solution. The Danish Football Federation eventually took interest in Tommy's invention, particularly the fan scene at Bromby. We take a big pride in the choreos, where we are considered one of the leading, if not the leading club in Denmark. Always seeing how we can do things differently, um, just changing things up and so making things better for everyone. Finally, after five years of testing and negotiation, this December, T Fontaine Pyro was tested by Bromby fans against FC Michelin. And as you can see, it was an incredible success where they were able to write the year of the club's founding, 1964, with over 200 flares. Something that would be impossible with the amount of smoke created by traditional flares. I must say, it, it worked even better than I thought. Mm. It, I'm very satisfied and, 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 and the, the, the fans in Brunby did an amazing job. Yeah, it was completely legal and uh, everybody was safe. It is a great honor to come up with something that people like and people maybe will use. Although it still costs significantly more than the average pyro, it would become more accessible once approved by clubs and federations. And, as the creators and innovators of this technology will be the first to say, T Fontaine will never replace actual flares. The need for sensible regulation around pyro remains an issue. However, the T Fontaine flare does represent an exciting alternative for a different kind of choreography. One that will allow fans new opportunities to express their collective identities. It's just a new tool, it's not a replacement. It's, it will never be a replacement because you cannot have that light explosion with the legal ones, but we're also trying more to pitch it as an alternative. It's just going to be something that you can use for your choreos instead of using flags. So it's kind of the same as that. I had, I had never uh, really uh, given much thought what are they doing and, and what is their uh, TIFOs and all that kind of stuff. But when I saw what they really are making, uh, I, I, I was quite amazed because it's wonderful things. They are really good people. They know something about art and perspective and all that kind of things. Uh, I have in, in given them the pencil, a new pencil, and now it's, it's their uh, job 
to be the artist, to be the to be the Van Gogh and uh, uh, the Monet and and all that kind of and, and and do these wonderful things. 